Hey everyone, I hope all of you had an amazing day and I want to hereby officially welcome you to Kayan Al Bashar or as it was formerly known the Mystery Zoo and as you might have already read from the name and the screenshot I posted earlier it's going to be an well the easiest way might be to say Islamic style zoo but it's going to take references from Arabian architecture, Turkish, Sun Spain and Indian architecture and probably a lot more down the road. So may I think Islamic style would cover all of that or most of it. But otherwise I'm just going to call it the Bashar style zoo because it's just going to be a mashup of all different styles. And as the name already says, it's not going to be a realistic zoo at all. Actually the name is made out of three languages, sort of. The last word Bashar is actually, well, there's an interesting story by, behind B Bashar, but so Kayan Bash, whoa, Kayan Al Bashar, yes, I'm going to mispronounce it and I'm going to miss it because it's somewhat of a mouthful, but I really like the name. But Kayan Al Bashar, as I said, is made out of three different languages. So Kayan can mean floating in Turkish. I think it's one of like the variable words which you can use instead of the main words. That is usually used for floating, but so Kayan, basically I use it as floating because it has a nice little ring to it. Al means the in Arabic, so there's not much to that. But as I said, Bashar was kind of like a happy little accident because it has kind of a lot of different meanings. Lately, or just before I started recording, I actually found out that Bashar can be used as a term for humanity in Arabic. I might be wrong there and I might have misread it, but I just like I wanted to find out like how am I going to pronounce this because I'm already terrible at pronunciation, so I wanted to try and get it right at least once. I'm I probably haven't done that either, but I tried. But so Bashar can mean humanity in Arabic. So that would mean like the floating humanity if you completely translated the name into English. But Bashar basically actually, well, I made it up or derived it from Basra, which is a city in southeastern Iraq, which is a city for some reason that it has always interested me. Maybe because I really just like the name Basra. But then there are two origins of that name. And here is where the accident happened because it's, well, let's just say how it went. So the name Basra has two different origins or like two different origins that are like maybe are the origins of the word or the name. So I thought that like in Aramaic it meant overwatcher slash watcher. I was wrong there. I switched up the meaning f from like the Aramic words or the Aramic origin of Basra with the Arab so Arabic words or me origin of Basra. So in reality, in Arabic it means watcher slash overwatcher, and in Aramic it actually means settlement. So it can still work either way. So Basra is just of Bashar is just it's not the real word for what those meanings have. But um, yeah, so you can uh, see Kayan al-Bashar as the floating city, but also the floating humanity and uh, the floating watch. I mean, both meanings of the name kind of work for what we're building. So yeah, that's basically my little ramble on the name. So uh, yeah, Kayan al-Bashar going to mispronounce it probably but uh, in my version of the word name it means the floating city again like I was really wrong with like the Aramic meaning because I just misread it and well it just had the two meanings right under each other and somehow my brain just switched them up but it was a little bit of a happy little accent because I looked for like words in let's say Turkish, Persian and Arabic for a city. I didn't find one that had like a nice little ring to it in addition to Kayan Al. So I went a bit 
Bashar just because of Basra and then to find out that in the Aramic origin of Basra there is the Aramic origin word is there but I've forgotten it same with the Arabic origin of Basra but to find out that that means settlement was actually like I was overjoyed that in my squirrel brain it somehow worked out well so yeah the floating city Kayan al Bashar and I'm going to mispronounce it and uh, I really just want to roll the R in Bashar like I think you can already hear that I am just unconsciously doing that which probably isn't right but it just sounds better so yeah let's just move on so we are starting off with the facade of the palace of the first island and I really like how I actually well let's just say when you think of like Islamic style buildings you usually well at least I usually start thinking of two things the usually massive like onion shaped domes or well in this case it's more like garlic shape because it just goes down a little bit more again Bashar well it's actually this arch or this um, well the gate we're already past the gate because I just went on a complete ramble on the name but they when you think of Islamic architecture you usually think of the domes and the arches because they have that same iconic shape a little bit but I just when I was researching of like all right how do I want to do this because they're well Arabian or Islamic style you know I wanted to do something extra with it so that's when I found out that there's also these like domed arches for like entrances and just facades and I really loved making them like you can make those as extravagant as you want so let's just say I might later on when I'm more comfortable with building like you could also see that in our like later on the buildings just became a little bit more like well extravagant a little bit more intricate because I was just more used to the way of building so later on I might actually make these domes even more intricate so there's now already like a little bit of decoration inside the dome which there usually is from what I have seen and uh, yeah I'm just really happy with how it turned out it's going to be like the entrance to the palace and I originally planned to have this palace done in this episode so uh, yeah knowing my track record it's going to take five episodes I'm actually not joking because the palace is also going to be an indoor habitat and I want to also have like shops in there like I want just a full deal in there so I don't know how I came to the sense that I like oh I can maybe finish this in one episode no of course I couldn't like we are only going to build the facade today also we are going to build the red panda habitat today and you might be wondering that red pandas don't live in like Arabia or well somewhere around that place and uh, you're correct but I also said that Kayan al-Bashar is going to be a fancy like not real so not realistic style zoo it's going to be heavily relying on like magic I mean all of the zoo is going to be floating in the air and yes I'm going to build massive waterfalls because if you have floating islands the best way to use waterfalls is to make them drop off the edge it's going to be interesting because this island already is quite high up in the air and I'm also very happy to see that like in plant coaster you have to well if you want to move the spawn point of where the guests go or come from you have to go from sandbox you need to get your sandbox park into scenario edit and then you can adjust the spawn points here that's literally just a bill or, or just a piece in facilities so I'm very happy that I don't have to work around that to get the spawn point up in the air oh well well now the spawn point is still down below so there's still a massive stairway but um, yeah let's just uh, move on from that but as I said red pandas are going to be the first habitat that we built today 
well, it's, we're not going to build the entire habitat because, uh, as I said, it's a massive palace. So I needed to think, like, all right, what is most necessary to go in this episode if I still want to wrap pandas in this episode? And what can I cut out? So there's going to be actually a lot that I cut out. And also there are going to be, excuse me, there are going to be a lot of wrap pandas. <laughs> because this entire island is going to be a wrap panda habitat. So... Originally, I thought like, oh, I can get like 20 red pandas in like a massive habitat. I forgot that they are solitary animals, so they don't do well in groups larger than two. So, you know, like a couple and then anything beyond that, they don't like that. But uh, it kind of worked out because what we're building today is the facade of the palace, but also the front garden, which is basically split in two. You can kind of see that in like five seconds uh, well if you s just pause the video at the right moment but it's split into two and then you also have like the inside of the palace which is going to be a habitat it might do also two habitats on the side of the palace so it kind of worked out well in a way because now i can make sure that every part of the palace has red panels and that they are not just like clumping together in one part of their habitat just because they have multiple habitats but that also means that i want to really make the entrance to the habitat like the keeper entrance it's very small very minimalistic so that you don't really pay attention to that and i want to slightly create a field that all the habitats could be connected but i'm not going too much into that I am, however, going way too much into what we're building right now, which does have the typical, like, Islamic style arch. But, uh, yeah, if you, I think, went back one minute, you could see just the normal glass pieces that we have in-game. But I just thought, like, alright, I'm already going insane with this palace. Why don't I just make a custom window? So, um, I wanted to have, like, an open-air style window or, like, just one with that um how is it called but just those like the word that comes to my mind is the wrong word for it but those grades like those hmm let's just say uh, let's just keep saying open air it has another word but uh, i'm probably going to see it later on and then i'm going to scream it out loud because yeah let's just uh move on but i wanted to make custom windows because I was already going crazy with it and also this is one tip if you want to make domes I blatantly stole this from Rudy but uh, yeah I wanted to make these domed arches and later on I want to make a dome but I just couldn't get the pieces to align properly so that if you rotated them they wouldn't well, align properly and it would be a very wonky thing so um, you see me well, you will constantly see me place these mud pillars, which are one of the few grid-based pillars, I would say. And they work wonders if you want to make a dome. Because you can just place, like, the piece on the pillar. Like, there's actually an option, and I've recently also started using this in Tionopolis, where you can, like, have pieces attached to another piece by, like, certain points so in like the perfect middle of the wall perfect middle or perfectly on top of a beam or pillar and um, basically move that one piece to the side duplicate it by and then rotating it 180 degrees and then if you rotate it then then it's a perfect dome if you do it by hand without using the pillar well i've tried that and uh, it didn't work out well actually this is the fourth version of kayan al-bashar the first version, I didn't use the pillar, so those were fair. Well, not the first version, but the version before this one. So back then, the domes were uh, very wonky. But uh, yeah, the first two versions were mainly just trying out, like, all right, what pieces can I use, and what continent is the zoo in, or at least what is like the basically the landscape style, because. As I said, well, I didn't actually say this, but I imagine Kayan al-Bashar to be based on an, I think it's like an Arabian legend of like the city swallowed by the sands. I think it's like called Elam or Iram or 
I think Elam and like the city of the desert, city of the pillars, which is basically just a swallowed city or city swallowed by the desert, which I took huge references off for Kayan al Bashar. So I imagine it to be like somewhere on like the Arabian Peninsula. But, and this is where it's kind of going wonky, but the Asian desert biome is kind of reddish. Or at least when I tried it out, it was kind of reddish. And so the building style that I've went with didn't really work out well. Also, this is another thing, but this is just in every biome I've tried so far. But the facade of the palace is always going to be in the shadow. So some of the pieces that you saw me use look black. They are actually green. And correct me if I'm wrong, but in Islam, I think that green was like a representation color for paradise, which kind of works well with Kayan al-Bashar because, well, I'm not going to build paradise, but I, uh, I'm also not going, or I'm not, not going to build paradise. Like I'm going to build a very lush and very tropical and very just extravagant zoo. But here I quickly also want to note that this is one thing where I kind of struggled because I always have like the urge to make buildings symmetrical. But if you make it symmetrical without like, you know, well, the facade is actually very flat. Let's just go there and when it's flat, I don't really like it because then it's not a very dynamic building. But because it's the facade and it's, well, basically just the front and center of the zoo, I couldn't make it, well, the, the pots go right in front of it. So I couldn't make it so that like pieces were like a little bit to the back or a little bit pushed out because we, I, we might have them, but I just haven't found them yet. But we, in Planko, we have like these guest barriers where they couldn't walk over for them. So that if you build on the pads and you place the guest barrier, well, basically in the ground because I don't think many people would place them actually on the ground but they would sink them in but then they wouldn't basically just walk through what you're building so uh, yeah the facade is actually very flat but to make a flat building also completely symmetrical it just made me think too much of like a French chateau type building so well the front entrance as you already saw it has like an extension on one side with that window and on the other side that window is just kind of flat so that's basically how i wanted to like try and break up the symmetry and this goes very against my nature because i just want to make buildings symmetrical because that's just like less stressful on the eye or like just a little bit more relaxed when you look at it but I didn't want to do that for this palace because then it would just look so flat. Because it's already flat and when I make a building symmetrical, like a Greek temple, yeah, those are symmetrical like completely. But uh, in palace, I tend to not make symmetrical, even though they were usually somewhat symmetrical. But also with like the Islamic or Basra style that I'm going for, I... Uh, yeah, it's already a little bit blocky because most of them are going to be flat roofs. So to have something completely symmetrical, somewhat blocky, just didn't feel right with me. So that's why the windows are different on either side of the front gate. And also these galleries that I'm building right now are also going to be different on each side. So on one side, they were completely closed off. They were just small little windows in the walls. But on this side, I wanted to make them open air. So I'm using those, uh, I'm like trying to see the name, but uh, I'm going with lattice panels. <laughs> Finally, so uh, those are the things that I use for the windows that are like open actually. So yeah, I really loved if we had like windows that, which didn't have like any like structural things. Like the windows that we have in game are like very modern looking. Or they are very like classical looking. You don't have just normal blank glass. Which, well, let's just say that 
I didn't use the classical windows just because it didn't feel right and it just enforced that like French Chateau vibe that I was getting. So using these ladders, well I think they're fences or they can be used for fences and like you know when you have like those plants that climb up the walls. But uh, yeah I just used them to basically kind of reference those um, well how do I call them? But uh, let's just call them open air uh, gallery or open air windows. I'm, there's a name for it, but I'm already terrible with pronunciation and I'm even worse with remembering names. So, yeah. Anyway, so one side is going to be open air and the other side is completely closed off just to break up that symmetry. And then, well, that's most of what we're going to do for the facade today. So. We're going to be cutting out a lot actually of what I built today. I'm going to go into like a real time section at the end of the video because when it comes to the red panda habitat, I build like the structural things. But the like plants and such I do off screen just because, well, otherwise this video would be 40 minutes or 50 because I basically built for long enough that I would have two episodes. But anyway, so red pandas and like the Arabian Peninsula, like they don't match well. This is another reason why I was so sad that I didn't have red pandas in the beta because Ozaru was the perfect place for red pandas, like the biome and just everything was correct there. So here it was just like, all right, how do I make this work? Because red pandas like colder climates, like they are like in Tibet and such, or like just the Himalayan region and uh, not in like the Arabian Peninsula <laughs> and this is uh, well I'm just going to um, well embarrass myself here but uh, I've already done that so many times so there's no real point of not saying this but here I also made a mistake well not in building but just with the repentance because for a long time I actually thought the repentance were like uh, well, that they were from Thailand, Philippines, and you know, Southeastern Asia. And not from like the Himalayan. So, uh, yeah, that was a fun little bit of uh, me being completely st stupid. But uh, let's just say, so with Red Pandas and the Arabian Peninsula, or like just this climate, they don't mix well. Also... I, for this habitat, I actually, well, I already went past that, but I actually made it so that um, all of the habitat is traversable because uh, I made that mistake with the elephant habitat. Also quickly, like this is the ideal for like the staff zones. I basically want to build like a second city or second layer to Kayan al-Bashar just for the staff, like kind of like referencing from like the... Uh, tunnels that Disney has in a few parks where you know the staff is basically on another level when they need to traverse the park so I want to go with that also for Kayan al-Bashar so that most of the staff is just out of view for the guests but anyway so I needed to cool this habitat first of all because it's uh, 40 degrees in the habitat and they uh, Red pandas don't do well in any type of temperature above 29, 30-ish. So um, yeah, the habitat is actually uh, quite cold. It's probably uh, very pleasant also as a guest because uh, again, 44 degrees it's now. I don't do well in hot weather, so uh, I would probably like actually try and get into this habitat just because of the temperature in the habitat not because i want to steal the red pandas no um well let's just uh, stop with that because um yeah let's just say red pandas are just my favorite animal i've always well not always been but they as soon as i like discovered how uh, well fluffy and everything they are they quickly became my favorite animal but um uh, yeah that makes it even more awkward that i thought that they were from Thailand and such so uh, uh, let's just uh, move on so 
I'm not going to build all the plants today. I'm going to go into a real time thing to show you guys because again, otherwise this video would be an hour long. So I'm just going to build like the structures, like the red pandas are mostly like live in the trees or like, well, actually every time I've seen them in real life, they are either sleeping in a tree or they're just like watching from a tree. So yeah, climbing is um, very important to them. And actually this is just a fun little note or maybe a little bit of like side information. I have seen them more on these climbing structures than on the ground itself. However, even though this is a massive habitat actually for the red pandas, I mean they are tiny compared to the habitat, they are very visible. Mostly because, again, they are mostly on those climbing things that I built now. And um, yeah, the rest of the habitat is like green and well, there's slight small tones of red, but mostly green and a little bit of like purplish and such. So a red panda just sticks out very much. However, I still sometimes lose them. Like, not lose them as in they escape because they come. They are basically in, um, well, ditch would be a bad way to say, but they're basically just in a hole somewhat. So they can't really escape unless I go completely insane with the plants and then they can escape by tree. I've actually seen them already sitting in some trees. But yeah, so the original idea was actually to make a massive red pen habitat. But as I said, they are solitary creatures, so that wouldn't work. But it also works out in one way because when, well, the main thought process when I was thinking of like massive habitat is like, are the red panels then just going to clump together in like one part of the habitat and then the rest of the habitat is empty? So making smaller habitats for them, but making multiple of them actually makes it so that every part of this palace is going to have red pandas which i'm very excited for but yeah so right now we are building some kind of tower because the pandas needed uh, shelter and the idea for the habitats that we're going to build so far are mostly well when it's in this palace island i wanted to make it look like it's part of the palace so you know gardens and i wanted to make something that fit in with the garden Basically, that's how this tower happened, and then I wanted to make a dome. First, I thought, like, maybe a golden dome, just because, like, it's a fantasy zoo. Like, Kayan Al-Bashar realism is uh, not found. I eventually dropped that because, well, I wanted to have a dome that actually worked, and uh, uh, having all those golden pots to make one dome was kind of like, all right, that's a little bit overkill. But eventually I end up with like a some well a green dome with just normal pieces and um, again if I'm correct with like green being like the representation color of paradise in Islam this could be a very good thing otherwise it's just a nice dome but anyway so uh, with the pieces in Plan Zoo like most of them aren't recallable, so that was like the main fear when building or try starting up in Plant Zoo of like, am I going to have to correct pieces? Because some pieces are recallable. Most of the time they are like named painted stuff. But of course, there are going to be pieces that I would love to have used, but they aren't recallable, so I can't use them. Most of those are like the Indian pieces, like the Indian walls. I would have loved to have used them, but they aren't recolorable. So I was just like, um, I would have loved to have used the bricks and such because they're like neat or like pristine bricks, but they are not too pristine. They are like just the perfect in between, but they aren't recolorable or I've just not looked into, into them too much. Yeah, I'm trying to make up an excuse that it feels like, but Anyway, so uh, again, those mud brick uh, beams or pillars are just my saving grace for this entire zoo, probably. Just because they are just the one, well, one of the very few pillars that are grid based. So they are perfect for building domes and for making walls that are like correctly aligned. 
and again just because this tower like it was a very quick like all right i need shelter let's try this it fits in with like the garden feel or like palace feel but i wanted to like see can i make this somewhat work in the end i do truly think that all the foliage that i placed around it and as you're going to see in like the real time section of this video saved this habitat a lot but then again like Red pandas are like foresty type animals, I believe. So uh, it also kind of works with like the real life place that they are in. But yeah, so it was basically just like, how can I salvage this tower? Because it, uh, well, in the beginning it was just like, it was nothing. But anyway, so the, well, the tower is just like, it's there for the longest time only when I place like all the foliage which again I didn't record because that would just break a two to one hour video <laughs> it does that already say that I'm very excited about Plan Zoo I'm very excited about Kayan Al-Bashar which I probably am mispronouncing it like I have the tendency or like I want to roll the R in Bashar I'm doing that subconsciously <laughs> so I probably shouldn't roll that R, but it just sounds a lot better with the rolling R. Like, Kayan Al-Bashar doesn't really work for me, at least. And Kayan Al-Bashar actually works a little bit better. So, yeah, I'm just making my own pronunciation of those words, even though they are actually this time real life words. That probably, sh I shouldn't do that probably, but uh, yeah, let's just go with it. Anyway, so as I, I think I've already said this, but the red pandas are most of the time on these climbing structures. And sometimes it's a little bit uh, strange because I didn't thought they would be able to climb the upright beams, but they do. So I shouldn't have been afraid of like, all right, are they able to climb this? But anyway, that's going to be it for the speed build. I am now going to jump into a real life a real time section just to show you what we have built so far and everything that I haven't shown you guys. So see you in five seconds. So welcome back. So this is basically what the habitat turned into. I think it's really just safe by the amount of plants without breaking that like garden, palace garden feel. So you will recognize the tower and the climbing stuff and you will actually, well, just as I'm going to say it, whoa, I don't know what the red panda there did, but uh, he is climbing there or walking there. But yeah, the, the habitat is basically safe by the amount of plants and they actually don't mind it. I'm going into it, probably going to bash into a tree because I can't control the camera for the life of me. But uh, yeah, this is another view just like, they don't mind all the tropical plants. Most of them are still from the Asian continent, which is why they don't mind them. Also, they're forest, well, forest D animals, so they don't really mind it being completely overgrown. Again, without breaking that like garden feel, like uh, it's kind of like, uh, it has a word for it, like menagerie or something like, let's just say, uh, try and keep that man menagerie. Also, I don't know if you see it, but uh, I just got an achievement that the red panda has given birth. So we have a baby red panda. Oh yeah, you can see it there in the distance. Quickly. That's the sad thing, and I think, yeah, Rudy also mentioned it to me, but uh, yeah. Baby red pandas are just red pandas, or mature red pandas scaled up. I think that one is going to play with the box, or... Of course. <laughs> of course she goes to poop when I'm here. But yeah, so that's the habitat mostly. Like, I just cluttered up this tower a little bit and just planted all these trees, plants and such. There are like some plants such as these are actually, well, I think I can go, no. <laughs> I have terrain collision on, let's forget that. But those are also trees just sunk in. And the facade, I think most of it you guys saw being built. I think the only thing that you didn't see are like the plants on the left side. But yeah, 
it's now still a little basic I would say but we are going to adjust that in the next video and then in the next video because I didn't show basically building all or most of this habitat I want to show it to you guys so as I said we're going to build multiple rep banner habitats that's so going to be like the first five episodes so in the next video because well we have this habitat, which is also going to be a red banner habitat, just because, well, originally this was planned as one large habitat, but because red banners live in like couples, and well, those are, I keep seeing them jump like uh, crazy, but um, let's just say now with red banners on this side and red banners on the other side, or red banners on the left side and on the right side, you basically just wherever you see there or wherever you look. There are red pandas, which is the goal of this palace. So anyway, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope to see you back in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you basically enjoyed the video. And I hope all of you have an amazing day. Bye bye.